Let's take a silent moment to look at this image. We can zoom into each area so you can see it more clearly. Think about the things you noticed. You didn't just see them, they caught your eye. You thought they might be important. Also, what did you wonder? Typically, we wonder one of these seven things. Go ahead and share with an elbow partner using the sentence starter, I notice or I wonder. We'll hold on this image to give you a minute to share your thoughts with a neighbor. This painting was made by a man named Vasily Kandinsky in 1926. He titled it Several Circles. In this project, we're going to wonder if shapes like these or these by Sonia Delaunay might actually represent numbers. What if our number system was based on the area that a shape occupied? This would be one, and this, five, and this one, ten. What about this one? Twenty-seven and two-tenths? Hmm. This system could be a problem. We may need to use more predictable numbers. You should have a page like this. Pause if you don't have this page yet. Shade what 10 could look like. Did you shade something like this? Or this? Did anyone shade one and a half by six and two thirds? That would also be 10. As we think about designing our area-based number system, let's keep the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands system that we're familiar with. If we melted down 10 ones, for example, we could have a long shape for 10, and it might look like this, which might look familiar if you've ever used base 10 blocks. But what if we wanted 10 to look like a perfect square like the blue one does? Which of these would represent a perfect 10? Back to the page in your packet. Can you shade 10 as a perfect square? Pause the video and try it. You could probably get 9 pretty easily, which is really close to 10. Not bad at all, really. But that last unit is kind of frustrating, isn't it? We could take that last unit and break it into 6 pieces and place them around the outside. So back to the question of which square best represents 10. I can tell you it isn't A 
or E? Do you want to change your answer? It isn't B or D either. It was C, and you may notice that matches what you shaded, a little bit more than three times wider and taller than the one. Let's think about the pattern we have so far. To make our square ten times larger, we had to make the one a little more than three times taller and wider. Math practice standard number eight from the Common Core State Standards is to look for regularity in repeated reasoning. In other words, to look for a pattern. This concept of a predictable place value increase is familiar to us in our decimal system where each place value is ten times that of the place to its right. Similarly, other number systems, like the computer-based binary system, use a different pattern. In that case, twice as big each time. Or looking back historically, the Mayans had a base 20 system, dating back roughly to the first century BC. Each place value was 20 times greater than the one below it. This concept of a predictable place value increase is familiar and useful to us in our standard number system where each place value is 10 times that of the place to its right. So 1 to 10 was about 3 times wider and taller. But what about 10 to 100? Could that also be 3 times wider and taller? What about a hundred to a thousand? A key concept in our number system is that every movement across one place value is ten times larger or smaller, and represented geometrically, we need to enlarge the square a bit more than three times in height and width to achieve this. But would the pattern work with other shapes that were not squares? Let's consider triangles. What do you notice here? Could it even work with circles? Does it look like about 10 of the smaller circles would fit into the next larger circle if we increase the diameter by a little more than 3 each time? So let's practice. Back to our system, what number do you think this is? It's similar to the one on your page. Write down your number or tell an elbow partner your guess. If you imagined the reds as ones, you might have thought this was 137. But if those reds were instead tens, couldn't this have been 1,370? And what if the green was actually a one? then we would have 1 and 37 hundredths. This is a challenge of an area-based number system. We need to know what is 1, or at least know the value of any one of the shapes, to know the value of the remaining shapes. Before we make some art based on this idea, let's consider some art vocabulary words. Symmetry is the quality of being made up of the same parts facing each other as you see in the first three shapes, or around a center point, as in the last example. In this example of 235, the yellows are hundreds, the reds are tens, and the blues are ones. It isn't a particularly interesting composition. There's no symmetry, and also no overlap where one shape covers another. This example shows opaque shapes, ones that you can't see through, and also horizontal and vertical symmetry. We are also covering one shape with another. That's using overlap. This is the same arrangement, but instead of opaque shapes, they're transparent. We can see through them. This effect can be painted easily with watercolors. Does this composition look familiar? It's actually very close to the image we started with. When students create images for numbers, they do some creative things. 
Here, for example, is 514, shown as 3 hundreds, 20 tens, and 14 ones. Notice how the student broke the 5 hundreds into 3 hundreds with 20 tens. This process is known in math as decomposing numbers, breaking them into smaller parts, turning a hundred into ten tens, for example. It can give you more shapes to use if you need them for your art. There's a danger in thinking that any similar shapes that are small, medium, and large will work for three place values. For example, if a student used these shapes for one, ten, and a hundred, are the areas the right size? Actually, the 10 is closer to 7, and the 100 isn't even half of 100. This is much closer to the correct sizes. For the project, being close, or at least reasonable, is all that's required. If the shape representing the next larger place value is 9 or 11 times larger instead of exactly 10 times larger, that's probably okay. But if it's only 5 times larger or 20 times larger, that's not reasonable. The ability to estimate sizes is critical here. Who's closer here, red or blue? Tell your elbow partner. Did you get it? Red was about 4 or 5 times larger, but blue was really close, at least 9 times larger. Who's closer this time? Purple or green? Again, tell your elbow partner. This time purple was really close at about nine times larger, but green was only four times larger. Your challenge is to create a shape-based artwork that shows a number that you get to choose based on the requirements and materials your teacher suggests. I have a few examples showing different materials. This example shows the number 125 using opaque paper collage, vertical and horizontal symmetry. This one is a little more complex. Let's see if the student is accurate in their 1 to 10 comparison. Look at this small red unit circle compared to the purple 10 circle. Oh, looks great! That's about three times wider and taller, which means about nine ones could fit into it. What about the purple 10 circle compared to the green 100 circle? Again, they seem to be really careful with their sizes. But what number were they representing? Do you see 15 ones? It looks like about nine tens. And do you see five hundreds? Well, that would add up to the number 605. Here's a watercolor triangle painting. Do you see four red ones? Three tens? Do you see two hundreds and a thousand? Hey, that's a fun number, one, two, three, four, or 1,234. Here are the Common Core State Standards in math for grades 3, 4, and 5. Your teacher may have different requirements for your project. One tip for your project is to choose a number with different digits, like these. Having several of the same digit being repeated can be confusing. Also, represent only a few place values. These two, for example, only have three places that aren't zeros. These have seven and five places and are very difficult to create visually. So I leave you with this creative challenge. Enjoy! <laughs>